Greetings, I'm Dr. Rachel Meixner, and I am here to help you with composing IEP goals and objectives that are measurable, skill-based, and which uphold data privacy, which is one of the most important considerations when we're using AI for due process paperwork. So if you see here on my screen, I am at ChatGPT, just the general, simple ChatGPT. There are many, many, many platforms out there for you to use if you want to explore AI. But for IEP goals and objectives, I keep it simple. ChatGPT is my favorite place because it is the place where I can work with the content they give me. Um, and it's just wide open. Now, because it's open, that word should scare us a little bit as special educators because we don't want any student information out in the open. So whenever you're working in ChatGPT, make sure you never use a student's name, never use the name of your school, never use the name of your district, nothing that could identify anything. In fact, you'll see here that I'm in ChatGPT, and when you open ChatGPT, you'll get a prompt, do you want to log in? I always say no, because if you log in, all of the data you enter is tied to your name, and I don't want anyone to ever be able to identify anything I'm working with because that could come back to my school and my students. So you'll see up here, it says log in. I am choosing not to do that. Now I can work with content. I can pull the content from ChatGPT, paste it into documents, and work with them in my private documents where I am logged in, if that makes sense. So first we're going to imagine that you have a student and we're going to do more of a traditional academic goal. So we have a student who uh, is working on multi-digit multiplication, which a lot of students are working on. And at this moment in time, we've done a baseline assessment, which is very important. You have to find out their present level. And we have discovered that the student is completing multi-digit multiplication with 30% accuracy. So there's definitely a lot of room for growth. So the first thing I do is I write the goal. I don't write the goals and objectives at the same time, and I'll show you how that works. Often when you're using AI, it's a building process. So um, instead of trying to write it all at once, that's not going to generate exactly what I want. So I build first the goal, then the objectives, and then I can pick and choose what I want for the student. So I am going to prompt ChatGPT, and I'm going to say, compose a goal with a from to structure for a student named student, there's your data privacy, who is currently completing multi-digit multiplication problems Ooh. with 30% accuracy. Then I hit enter. So there's my from to goal. Student will increase accuracy in solving multi-digit multiplication problems from 30% to 80% accuracy on grade level tasks as measured by teacher created assessment over the next eight weeks. Now, this is where your teacher mind is very important. I would tweak the goal. I would remove over the next eight weeks because I don't need that timeline. The timeline will be included in the objectives if I need that. We know the implied timeline is over the annual IEP year. The other thing is you need to think about your student. Is 80% realistic? That's the piece that you might want to change. Okay, so now I like the structure of this. I'm going to click copy. Then I'm going to go over to my Google Drive and I just open a, oh, there's my daughter posing for a selfie, love that. All right, I open a new document. Now here I'm in my private drive, so I can use the student's initials and I can say this is for RM's IEP. And I just have one working document. I'll add the present level. I'll add everything that I work with. But right now, we're starting with the goals that we discussed 
at the IEP meeting or that we know we want for the student. So I've got my multi-digit multiplication goal, and I'm going to paste in what this produced, remove the extra, because ChatGPT likes to talk to you. Let me know if you'd like this tailored in a different format. Then before I forget, I'm gonna make those changes. So for, for this student, I'm gonna do 70% and I'm removing that little over the next eight weeks. This is where the teacher professionalism and understanding of special ed comes into play. Now I need my objectives, right? This is where the power of AI has helped me the most because if you prompt correctly, what I will do is I will say, provide seven skill base. By the way, I'm back over in ChatGPT. Sorry, I don't wanna to click too quickly. So in ChatGPT, I still have the goal there and I'm going to say, provide seven skill-based measurable objectives um, for this goal. Now you notice I have a typo here. That's why I like to do this live. It doesn't matter. It knows what I mean. It also knows IDEA, so you don't have to worry about that either. Now you may be wondering, why do I say seven? Obviously I'm not going to have seven objectives for the students. I like to do seven or 10 because then I can pick and choose the ones that I like. Remember, even though you're using AI, this should be individualized to the student. So you need to look at those seven objectives, pick the ones that match your student, um, pick the ideas that you can keep data on, whatever is actually going to work in real life. Because remember, the IEP is a legally binding document and it needs to match the student and the desires of the family. So here we go. Let's see the seven objectives it provides. Okay, so it knows that a student has to understand place value in order to complete uh, multi-digit mu multiplication, basic fact fluency, multiplying by one digit numbers. So it's kind of skill building, right? The partial product strategy, the standard algorithm match mastery, whichever one you think will work best for the student. So I like the idea of some of these kind of higher level objectives because I'm working with high school students. If you're trying to work with um, you know, younger students or students who have fewer um, skills, you might choose some of these kind of lower level skills that build toward multi-digit, but we're already there. So I'm going to choose this one and instead of copying all of them, I'm going to cherry pick the ones I like. So students will use the partial products method to solve two by two multiplication problems. 80% accuracy, four out of five trials. Yes, I can measure that. So I'm going to copy it and I'm going to paste it under objectives. Um, let's say I like the word problem idea. That's very important because we have a lot of word problems in assessments. So now I have um, my goal, I have the two objectives that I picked. Now, because I'm logged into a secure Google Doc, I'm able to enter the student's name. So I'm going to do Control F. So I'm holding down Control, hit F, and I have popped open Find in the document. I'm going to click these three dots. I'm going to write student, right, which is the pseudonym I'm using. Now I can replace it with the student's name, which for this case, I'm going to use my name. It's the safest to use. My name is Rachel. So now I'm going to hit replace all and I am ready with my goal to uh, paste right into my IEP. I've got Rachel's goal and I've got Rachel's two objectives. Now, I know that seems like a lot of steps and I've heard people say, I'd rather just type it myself. But the truth is the place where we let the AI help us the most and do the mental heavy lifting is when we do this process, letting it come up with our skill-based measurable objectives. That's the magic word. Now in my practice, I also have to write and I'm going to refresh. So I clear all of that out now, it's gone. Um, when you hit refresh, it disappears. And I always do that because I want the um, ChatGPT to have a blank slate. 
In my practice, I ha also have to write social skills goals, which can be really nebulous. Organization goals, study skills goals, those can be really hard to come up with because how do I measure conversation skills? How do I measure, do I complete my homework? Things like that. So what I'm going to do now is I'll demonstrate how to write a social skills goal. So let's imagine that I have a student who's having a hard time staying on topics in conversation. So I will say write a goal, remember in from to format for a student named student, remember for data privacy, who is working on staying on topic in conversations. There I have a typo, I don't have to worry about it. Um, at this time, student is staying on topic on two out of five observations. Now remember, I'm not worrying about objectives yet. I'm writing the goal. Student will increase their ability to stay on topic during conversations from two out of five observed opportunities to four out of five observed opportunities as measured by teacher or staff observation over the next nine weeks. Again, I'm going to take out the nine weeks. Uh, sometimes ChatGPT is just trying to help a little too much. So now I'm going to go back to my private document and I'm going to say this is my conversation skills goal. And let me zoom in and scroll up so that you can see that better. There we go. So now I'm working on my conversation skills goal. I've got it here. Now I'm going to build my objectives and then I will enter the student's name when I'm all finished up. So for this one, there are tons of ways to teach this. So I'm actually going to ask for 10 skill-based objectives to choose from. So I'm going to say compose 10 measurable skill-based objectives for this goal and see what we come up with. Um, again, this is the magic because I don't have to think about it. Um, so let me read these through. Given a conversation prompt, student will respond with a relevant comment or question that stays on topic on four out of five opportunities. Very simple. I love it. I'm using that one. So as you can see, oops, apologies. As you can see, I have so much to choose from. And if I've had a long day, I don't have to really use my brain. What I need to use is my judgment. It gives me content to analyze. That's easier than pulling things out of thin air. All right. Um, student will identify whether a peer's comment is on or off topic. Nope, I don't like that. That could lead to drama that I don't need, right? Um, how about student will maintain a topic of conversation for at least three conversational turns. I love that. So we're holding a conversation now. I'm going to use that one. So again, you could go through all 10 of them and see what you like. Um, oh, I like this one. In a 10 minute peer interaction, student will contribute at least three on topic comments or questions in four out of five sessions. So as you can see, it knows what skill based measurable means. And that is what we legally must have for our students. So now once again, I am good to go. I am ready with my goal and two objectives. I'm going to hit control F. I'm going to hit my three dots um, and I'm going to replace the name student with Rachel, my student's name. And remember, I can do that because I am in a logged in secure Google document. Never, ever, ever put a student's name into ChatGPT or any other identifiable information. I do not put teachers' names. I do not put anything, parents' names, nothing, because you just don't know where it's going. So now I'm going to hit replace all. I'm going to close out of that. And now I'm ready to put the conversation goal into my IEP. Now remember, both of these goals demonstrate a from to structure, which is important. Make sure you have baseline data so that you're able to compose legally binding from two goals and you will be ready to rock. Um, thank you so much for viewing this and I hope it helps you so that you can spend less time on paperwork 
and more time on empowering and loving your students. Have a great day.